This is Paul. Um, Paul, I phoned one morning. <laughs> bound and gagged in a bunker on the golf course next to our house. <laughs> <laughs> David, would you tell us how you know Paul? Uh, this is my driver, Paul, <laughs> and he refuses... <laughs> He refuses to drink pints because his hands are so small. <laughs> and, uh, finally, Sarah, your relationship with Paul? Uh, this is my news agent, Paul, and he once asked me to uh, watch the shop for ten minutes, and by the time he came back, I'd broken a window and there was a little boy had his head stuck in a crisp box. <laughs> Ronnie? Yeah. This bunker? Yes. Well, what were you doing? This is early in the morning. Very right? early in the morning, because I go out very early in the morning, about maybe quarter past seven, twenty past seven. On the golf course? On the golf course. In case uh, anyone wants to use you as a tea. But, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it is upsetting. It is upsetting. <laughs> Mind you, I shouldn't worry, because the other day I walked out of my big golfing flat hat and the greenkeeper rushed out and says, these bloody mushrooms are early this year. <laughs> So you saw, you saw him on the... You saw him... Uh, to be truthful, the two dogs, they went into the bunk. I thought, well, they're sniffing about that. And I went over there, and there what Paul was, bound and gagged, uh, in, the bunk, in the sand, in the bunker. Uh, uh, and then what happened? Well, then I... I you were... He was coming round, cos I think he had had a bit of a night the night before, so I, t I tapped him on the cheeks gently like that, and when I was tapping on the cheeks and I done down the string, you think, and, you're, and string round your ankles, you were really relieved, came round, didn't you? And I took you back home to uh, Anne for a cup of tea, a cup of a bit of toast, and the dogs were very pleased to have found him. He'd been there all night. What was this? Was this some sort of prank? I mean, was it a stag do or something? Well, I didn't want to be too nosy about it. I wanted to look after him, get her on the phone to his friend, right. have him collected and off the bloody premises. <laughs> <laughs> okay. David, tell us about the, the whole business with the pints, then. What, well, what Paul told me is that he always chooses to drink bottled beer because when he holds a pint... His Wait, can I, this isn't at the wheel, is it? This is... <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no, but on a night out, he chooses to drink bottled beer rather than pints because he gets laughed at when for holding uh, a pint glass, because he sort of has to use two hands. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> not... <laughs> Are you sure they're not serving it in, in buckets? <laughs> Maybe there's some course you could go on to make your hands bigger. <laughs> what about this boy who got his head stuck oh, yeah, I forgot about in a box of crisps? Well, How did at, that come about? It was at the end of the school time, sort of four o'clock, and uh, there was a rush of little kids and uh, one of them just wanted to get himself some crisps out the box and it was the last one and he got his head stuck in because he sort of went in. The cardboard boxes with all the crisps <laughs> yeah, in, yeah, in the, the hole. hole? Yeah, yeah, he couldn't quite reach so he went he in his, his head, head first. In. And, he, and it was stuck? Yeah. <laughs> and you couldn't think of any way to unstick him? Well, I don't really do, kids. Um... <laughs> See, this is the dilemma now. The dilemma is... You're saying it's definitely... You're saying there's no chance of it being wrong. It's Ronnie's. unlikely, right. but I'm not saying it's definite, right? I want that to be true more than any other story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> because that's what I want to see Ronnie doing in the big chair next time. Uh, you're, you're not going to believe it. <laughs> I can't do the voice. All oh, right, I can't Ooh. do the voice. And if I could, I wouldn't keep doing it. <laughs> but... <laughs> but... Oh. Ronnie, can you do an impression of Rob? Uh, no, no. I've, I've, never, <laughs> I've never felt the need to do an impression of Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you want the glasses? I love the glasses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we are. How about it? There we are. Oh my word! Goodness me! <laughs> And in a packed programme tonight. <laughs> uh, good Lord, you get vertigo in those. Oh, God. <laughs> Nobody without these. You know? God. I think it might be Sarah because right. she looks like the kind of person that could break a window and almost kill a small boy in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to overrule my team and say it's Sarah. Oh, bold. OK, I'm you're saying that it's Sarah and the news agent. Sarah. OK. Paul, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Paul. I'm David's driver, and I don't think time's got the hands are small. Okay. I, do, I read it now, don't I? I, I ideally. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> in an ideal world, you, you'd read it out loud. <laughs> I was interrogated uh, for six hours on suspicion of being a spy. Steve. Wow. Where? 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 Sorry, it's the accent. Where? Oh, where? Can, you, can you interpret for me? Where? For the, for the first man in the corner. Where were you interrogated? <laughs> so, it was uh, um, a, an island in the Pacific called Pitcairn. Called what? Pitcairn. And what were you doing there? Uh, basically, I was out there doing some research about remote communities, remote islands, and, uh, and I arrived and they thought I looked very dodgy and that I must be a spy. And just one extra twist to this is that uh, they also accused me of trying to illegally smuggle plants. Yeah. What kind of plants? Uh, breadfruit plants. Breadfruit plants? <laughs> Are you just making up no. words <laughs> <tonight>? <laughs> Has anyone tried breadfruit? Horrid. It smells like old socks. It Horrid. tastes neither Horrid. like bread nor fruit. No. <laughs> no I I imagine anyone who's not heard of the breadfruit plants. Do we all know the breadfruit plants? I've heard of the breadfruit plants. I am the only one who's not heard of it. I might have heard of Pitcairn Island world. as well. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. So have you all heard of the breadfruit plant? Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> what did they actually do to you? What's quite interesting is that, because there's only, I think there's 36 inhabitants on this island, they were very suspicious that I was there because no one had been on the island for about 18 months. You say they, they didn't know why you were there. I mean, don't these people watch Country File? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they, they, they didn't know no telly. It. So what actually happened then? What happened? So, uh, got interrogated for about six hours, got accused of not just being a spy but smuggling this uh, plant in. They found me guilty and I was deported and had a five-week journey back to Polynesia and then back to England. This was for a television programme, no, was it? No, I was just out there on my own. You just researching into Yeah, researching, yeah, into researching for a book fruit. that I was going to write. So what do you think? Is he telling the truth? Well, I know that he did. I know that he did the journey because I've seen the book. I don't know whether he's using the story, which is a true story, and then adding, and then adding the a bit interrogation. On. Like, and if, you, I'm if not yours convinced. was I read the news sometimes naked from the waist down, <laughs> it would be true that you read the news, right? But you've, you've added a bit on, haven't you? <laughs> Taking I'll a bit off. Hang on, let's, off. let's all. <laughs> it's a, a semi true. It's a semi, yeah. yeah it's a semi, and definitely, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Back to the interrogation. <laughs> so back to the interrogation. Is it just me or is there a bit of a frisson now yeah. between <laughs> Lee and Kate? I'm having yeah. a hot flash. <laughs> Imagine what Lee's having. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I think it probably is a bit of an add on. Do you think it's not true? I don't think it's true. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that as well. You think yeah. it's not true as well? Mm. Go on then, my team says not true. Say not true. Okay, yeah. so Ben, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling. Truth. No. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yes. Wow. I've had to prise open my bedroom door for the last two years, ever since the door handle fell off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? What do you use to prise open the door? Uh, just my fingernails. <laughs> and I, you have to go to the top of the, the door jam. Is it an out or a? No, it's it's all it depends which side. <laughs> <laughs> Do you live on your own? I can answer that. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I have a flatmate, but it's just my bedroom, yeah. It's only you that has the inconvenience. So you have to do... I'm, I'm absolutely the only person who ever needs to get in or out. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks to me with a, with a stare, and I don't know... That's just, you know, don't a, say a look of resignation. <laughs> Why haven't you just whipped out a knob and affixed it to the entrance? <laughs> uh, basically, it wouldn't, it's not really, you can't just screw it back on because the holes that the screws... Uh, the thread's gone. That's it! <laughs> uh, Keely, speaking as the only woman, uh, in your single days before you settled oh, down... Oh, God! And yes. you would, you'd have been you'd met as David and you'd be getting on like a wildfire and he said, well, why don't you come back to my... I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. It's either this or Ronnie Corbett. Right. Um, why, don't, why don't you come back to my uh, apartment and uh, we could settle down and have a game of Boggle. So... <laughs> so, you, you go there, you go there... And... And he says, well, why don't we go upstairs? And you go upstairs and you get to the door <laughs> and there's no handle <laughs> or knob. Would that put you off? 
This actually happened to me once. David! <laughs> David! You're a dark horse. I don't remember. <laughs> in the morning to leave, I couldn't get out. Huh? And I didn't know where I was. You didn't know where you were? <laughs> wow, really? Well, I had to ring the fire brigade. I, I think I, I should say, at this point, this was not at my house. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to come and put a ladder up to the window and give me a fireman's lift where, out. Where was the man who's ha who you'd gone oh, back he'd with? he'd gone to work. He'd gone to work so and locked you in for later. Know. Didn't know. <laughs> She'll keep till I get back. <laughs> wow, wow. OK, what are you going to say, Lee? I think it's a lie. It's a lie? It looks it's... like a man that's got well-maintained doors. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it's a lie. OK, yeah. then we'll say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. David Mitchell, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. David has had to prise open his bedroom door for the last two years ever since the door handle fell off. Occasionally, as a treat, I put Marmite on my face and let my dog lick it off. <laughs> face, 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 face. face. Yeah. And this is, yeah. this is a treat for you or the dog? <laughs> I see it as a treat for the dog, because... How does like, he see it? Like many people, I don't... <laughs> Apparently also very much as a treat. What kind of dog, please? She's a spring spaniel. You say this is predominantly for the dog. You must enjoy it on some level, because that's quite an extreme activity to do with... I've always just liked... Just for a dog. I've always liked having my face licked by the family dog. <laughs> always. By just the dog? Anyone else? Uh, well, cats have a raspy, sandpapery tongue and it's not nearly so nice. Have you ever been caught in that awkward moment where you've marmited up and then somebody's rung the doorbell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, by members of, of the household, but not by strangers at the door. Do dogs like marmite? Dolly does. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a helpful line that's of inquiry, why they is it? You. Do dog, dogs like. They like salt. Of course it's a helpful line of inquiry. All dogs hate marmite. It can't be true. Yeah. I don't think there's anybody on the planet that could answer that question properly. You don't think there's anyone on, on the, the planet, 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 planet that could answer the question, do all dogs not... like marmite? No, I don't think there is. I don't, I don't want this to sound like a rebuke. <laughs> what I was saying <laughs> was whether anyone knew whether or not all dogs might hate marmite. You, yep. You'd know if well, all that's, dogs... That's ate. very much just the other side of the coin, in my book. <laughs> no, 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 this isn't a coin. <laughs> there's dogs all hate Marmite. Yeah. There's dogs all yes. like Marmite. Yes. Or there's dogs have a similar view to Marmite as humans do. Yeah, what, let me not hate it? Rod, Rod, yeah. Rod, yeah, no, as, as someone who's now in Series 4, you never get into conversations like this with David. <laughs> <laughs> he always wins or wears no. you down. Just don't do it. <laughs> Surely, surely it is in almost certainly true that some dogs will like Marmite and some won't. No. For example, right. I would say yeah. that no cats right. like baked beans. Would you? No! <laughs> For two Definitely. hours, my cat yeah. got stuck in a fridge and genuinely <laughs> ate a bowl of uh, baked beans. Genuine, I swear, my life. <laughs> How did the cat get stuck in a fridge? <laughs> <laughs> the cat, um, I don't know, just leapt in when my mum opened it once. And then shut, and you didn't see it. And she didn't mom... see a cat in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> but she did that. Probably got some milk, cat jumped in, shut. Well, she got the milk for the cat and then went, <laughs> where's the cat? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong about cats and baked beans. What I'm saying is there are some foods liked by many humans that certain other species will never eat. Yeah. So what I'm saying is different species like different things, and no, it is possible. You said that it humans, the things that humans eat, that other animals, de yeah. all other animals, are species. We've got to learn like. to work together. Well, yeah, you really have. Well, in that case, you need to change your opinion. <laughs> this program has taken on tone of civil unrest. <laughs> I sense anarchy at the gates, David. I'll caution you once. Control your team. I'm going to have to call in the UN. <laughs> I, don't think I, cannot, I can no longer vouch for my team. Excuse me, what I'm have sorry. I done? I feel like a supply teacher who's been parachuted into a problem school. <laughs> 
and is finding it very difficult to cope. <laughs> Hugh, your original statement <laughs> yeah. was uh, to do with the, the dog licking off your face. Now, now, how often does this occur? It's something I started doing as a kid uh, because it was a good way to... That was a, several good dogs... Good way to what? <laughs> <laughs> to, get the, to get the family dog to lick my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, David Mitchell, what are you saying? Uh, truth or lie? Rod, what do you think? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think whatever my captain thinks, I will back him to the hilt. Oh, my word. That, Thank can you. I just say that he just touched David's leg in a slightly effeminate manner? <laughs> <laughs> like that. If that's what it takes to have them working as a team, Miranda, <laughs> I'm happy. That all that was sexual tension, is that what you're saying? <laughs> is that sexual tension? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't like it. <laughs> Miranda, what do you think? Um, I think it is a lie because uh, he doesn't look that desperate for affection in his life. It has to be a lie, David. Otherwise, there's something wrong with him. Mm. <laughs> so you both think it's a lie? Yes. yes. OK, we'll say lie. There's a lot riding on this All right. one. <laughs> so, uh, Hugh, Fernley Whittingstall. It was a lie. <laughs> 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 job as a postman but left after a week because I couldn't ride the bike. Lee Mac, what do you think? What, when was this? Uh, when I was a student. Oh, not just after this morning. <laughs> did they provide a bike or did you have your own bike? They provide a bike. And you couldn't ride it? No. Why couldn't you ride it? Because the basket on the front that you put the letters in it doesn't turn when you turn the handlebars, so you think you're probably going straight on, but you're not. You're trying to turn right, and you think, I'm scared, and then you fall off. Sorry, what decade, what decade are we talking Basket about? On the... Basket on the front? <laughs> How old were you at the time? Um, 18, so 1933. <laughs> <laughs> She's exaggerating. 34, <laughs> OK. My wife has a, has a bike with a high basket at the front. Sometimes I'll... Pop up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I might pop up into the basket, you know. <laughs> doing what he called it. I might <laughs> pop up and admire the view. <laughs> As you were. <laughs> so you lasted a week. Good. You lasted, don't encourage him. <laughs> I'm just glad that basket wasn't big enough to fit Terry Wogan in. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long? You're a week. Just one week is no! <laughs> Oh, I feel it's coming on. <laughs> now, are you, are you edging anywhere closer to... to Suicide, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do after that? What was your next job? <coughs> Fern? Question. You seem to be <laughs> Your face went to screen <laughs> saver, then. <laughs> Just jiggle my mouse, I'll come back. Um, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> um, I worked in a sweet shop. Do so, what do you think? Martin thinks it's true. Martin think thinks it's true. true. Yeah. Are you basing that on anything than a 50 50 guess? I'm basing it on because I didn't think it was when you started. You seemed hesitant. But then yeah. the confidence and the fullness of your answers convinced me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, that's probably the most polite answer we've had on the show so <laughs> The bit I don't understand is how the basket doesn't go the same way as well, the... Well, that's what she didn't understand. That's what let her down over the whole arrangement was the <laughs> faulty bloody bicycle. Go on, go with your science. You think it's not true? No. OK, it's time to make a guess. Well, I th I, what do we think? What was your... Summary? I've told you! Well, I didn't listen. <laughs> Jesus, this is dragging on, isn't it? You were a bit like Doc Martin then when you got a bit cross, wasn't you? Yeah. We saw that side of him, didn't we? It was quite exciting. <laughs> it was like watching Doc Martin without having to watch it. <laughs> I liked you in Inspector Morse. Do you remember when you went, you're a damn fool, Morse? Do you remember that? I also called him Cheese Inspector, but I said it really quickly, so no, and they left it in. Cheese Inspector? <laughs> for oh, friends when uh, I got a job. I called Lovejoy Love Juice as well. Did you? Oh, I love juice. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> Let's take a guess, then. Oh. I think it's true. You think it's true? Yeah, I don't think it's true. I have to make the decision, then, so I'll go with Sanjeev and say that that is not true. You think it's not true? You think it's a lie? OK, so, Fern Britain, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? 
It's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Fern did have a job as a postman, but she left after a week because she couldn't ride the bike. Uh, part of the problem is that the wheels on a post office bike are larger than normal. That's according to a spokesperson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a beauty. I once punched Muhammad Ali in the face. <gasps> wow. 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 <laughs> Blimey, O'Reilly. What, what, when? I, I would say, what, early 2004-ish. You punched Muhammad Ali right in the chops. Why? We, we were in a, in, a, in a hotel room together and we had... We... <laughs> Um, uh, I, I was asked to, to come and meet him uh, in, in his room. You were asked to come and... Why, why the hell were you asked to come and meet Muhammad Ali? Well, Muhammad, Muhammad wanted to meet me. <laughs> his, his wife was there and, and his manager, and, and I asked for a picture. Muhammad mumbled something uh, like this. Mm, mm. And... Uh, That's good mumble. What do you think? Yeah. It's about the mumble in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he said, come on, and I thought he was putting his fists up like that. And, yeah. I, and I said, what did you say? And his wife said he, he wants you to, to, to punch for the picture. <laughs> so you did. How, how hard so, did you punch him? Well, the thing well, was... show us on David. No. <laughs> <laughs> David, this is never going to be said to you again in showbiz world. Yeah. Just for a minute, pretend you're Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, I thought he was going to lean back for... The... Yeah. And, and he leant in, and I went, like that. Ooh. And then Ooh, I, I caught him right in the oh. nose. Oh, no. And there was a little, little bit of blood. A lot of blood? No. Yeah, no, there was... And so what happened then? Did um, he ask for a rematch? I, <laughs> I, I didn't hang around long enough. <laughs> and where was the hotel? Um, yeah, where was the hotel? It was, it, it was in, in Dublin. Have you ever... Fought with anyone before? You just look like you kind oh, of. He, he looks a bit useful, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. he did. You look like. Yeah. <laughs> the, the pretend punch on David was horrifyingly realistic. In fact. Yeah, <laughs> but that was all in my reaction, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Do you he's like done as much stage too? fighting as I have. You realise? <laughs> what you mean? That's if if you've been skill. hit as much as I have, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to call it theatre. <laughs> <laughs> it was really the only way of getting through school. <laughs> right, Lee, it's, it's, a, it's a fanciful tale. Um, I don't know. Does it, it could be. smack of truth for you? Deborah? I think it's a lie. It's the bit when... It's the blood trick. It's the blood there. trick. It's the detail of the blood. It's either a brilliant lie or... Or, no, it's just probably just a, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> OK, my team say a lie, I you say, say it's lie. a lie. OK. Patrick Kilty. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Oh. Truth. <laughs> so explain the bit where Muhammad Ali flies in and he asks, I mean, with the greatest <laughs> respect in the world. No, if no. you said, he said, I'd love to see that Bono guy, get Bono down, get him down now. I'm doing Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Hell, would he want to see the guy from Celebrity Love Island? I don't get it. <laughs> um, we, we did a gig together in Dublin, a sports event, and uh, and so I introduced him on stage. And the next day, he he wanted to see me. Incredible. <laughs> yes, it's true. Patrick did once punch Muhammad Ali in the face, and just nine short months later, Patrick regained consciousness. <laughs> I developed a word association system to remember people's names, but gave it up when it backfired on me. David, um, what, what was the word association system? Um, that to, I developed? To help remember people's uh, names. It was, I, Jack, um, you've just got a bit of fluff on you. Thank you very much. Keep thinking. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 what I do is I attach uh, a quality to someone and then, try and, and then try and relate that quality to the person's name. So, just for example, so, what would that uh, be? So, Jason Manford, if I, if I think Jason and the Argonauts and that, that would perhaps... And then next time I'll see you, I'll think 
uh, Argonauts will make me think of Jason. What's Argonaut like about Jason? <laughs> uh, uh, for instance, J Jason the Argonaut, mm. I might therefore J an Argonaut gives me Juggernaut. Right. And you look to me like a lorry driver. Right. <laughs> so it works. Therefore, I would think lorry driver Jason. And then when you next meet him, you say, Hi, Yorkie, how are you? This, well, uh, it, it has been which known is, which to is, backfire. Which is where we come to the hilarious backfiring anecdote. Oh, um, <laughs> that was a bad one. <laughs> I, um, we, we met someone uh, on holiday, and um, he uh, was his name was Charles, and he wore uh, very big sunglasses, like 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 a, only a blind person would wear. Mm. And um, so I thought that's brilliant, Ray Charles, because I will remember. I remember from the sunglasses, and therefore I will get Charles. And then the very so next year when we go, I can confidently say hello, Charles. But it didn't work. It's twelve months later, and you've slightly forgotten what what you'd set up as a system. So he walks in. I go hello, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> where did you Where did you meet him? Where was it? On the holiday. Where was it? <laughs> in Holidayville. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In Do uh, Dorset, it was in Dorset. And what? So you were in a pub, you were in a pub, and he walked over, and you went Stevie. Uh, he came. Uh, yeah, it was the following year, and I saw him again. And in, did in, he in, live in, round where, there? Where were you sat? No, he was a fellow holiday maker. So, and you, de you developed a, a sort of mild acquaintanceship with a man whose name you could barely remember, but yes. planned to holiday with him again. <laughs> no, there was no plan involved, David. We didn't get together and say, are you going to be here next year? Yes, are you? But you obviously thought it was a possibility, because you already had a plan for remembering his name. <laughs> I perhaps didn't explain correctly yeah. that I'd seen him the previous year at the same place and not known his name. So now it's so three uh, years <laughs> of your <laughs> So for three years, you and Charles holidayed with, with metronomic regularity <laughs> at the same place in Dorset. You kind of escaped Well, that's not so unusual. People tend to frequent the same place for holidays. Year one... You, you see him, but you don't exchange names. And then year yeah. two, you yeah. learn his name. To, to clarify this point, year one, there's no reason why I would know his name, because I hadn't been introduced to him. No. Th there's no reason for you to know year, his name at all. Year two, I had forgotten his name, but endeavoured to remember it for the third year. <laughs> right. All right, David. Is that the truth, or is it part of Jack's impish sense of fun and a lie? Um, I think it's the truth. Do you? I think it's a lie. I think... I think it's true. I think I'm going to go for true. Fine, that's all right. You know. You're but saying true? That's fine. Yeah. That's the team decision. OK. Jack D. It was uh, true. Oh, oh, OK. Well, that's me. Very good. Well done. Don't believe me. I recite my times tables every night before bed. <laughs> Why? Um, because I th I've always been rubbish at maths. It just doesn't go in my head. My brain doesn't compute that way. And I can learn loads and loads of lines if I'm acting, but um, <laughs> I've never been able to get my times tables in. And I thought, before I die, I want to be able to do my times tables. And also, <laughs> when you go to a sale and you go shopping, um, when it says 75% off a dress or 40%, I can't work that out. I know it's thick and I feel embarrassed because I'm sitting next to you and you've got a degree. I'm, I'm a famous mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, my secret identity is, is percentage man. <laughs> and not be able to do my times tables. Could so you recite right, them so? now, then? Before I go to bed, my husband lies next to me and I say, uh, I do them, and then I say... It's right, nice to see the romance, isn't it? <laughs> 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 I tell you what, dude, it's cold in the valleys, isn't it? Don't want it, I've got a game that'll cheer us up. <laughs> What do you start? What's the first one? It's not your two times table, is it? Yeah, it oh is. I've gone as far as about my six, and I get to seven. Don't go in. What's well, seven uh, times five? Um, I'm going to... Oh, God, this is so embarrassing. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I'm doing it. That's why I'm learning it. Yeah, them. but you might have dyscalculus, like me, so you're not thick. Have what? Dyscalculus, same as dyslexia, so that's what I've got. Oh, oh yeah, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> That is I've got shorterless. <laughs> well, that's true. <great. laughs> Don't you come round here giving any of that, sweetheart. You'll be barred from this bloody pub, all right? <laughs> but that is true. You might have that. You're not thick. 
Oh, Is yeah. there any kids watching? You're not thick if you can't add up. Mm. Well, you're a bit thick, aren't you? Well, I mean, it's a bit late, isn't it? You're not bright, let's put it like that. Do you, have, do you do it every single night without fail? Even if you come in really pissed, you still do it? You're getting on the times table? Yeah, and yeah, I still try to do it, yeah. Are you if, if, if there's a dress for 80 quid and it says oh, 50% off, will you struggle? <laughs> Right, well, oh, this is right. No, that would be 40, that 40 pounds, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I've got to check with you when I say it. I can't just say straight off. What I often find, actually, is in shops, when they take a percentage <laughs> off the original price, yeah. they will also tell you <laughs> the subsequent <laughs> price. It's actually it's quite a minority of shops make you work it out. <laughs> if you get it wrong, that's what you pay. <laughs> Charge. They go, I hope we don't get one of those discalculus people in. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was 50p. <laughs> so, Lee, what are you going to say? Is she have you, what have you cracked? Which one I've do you cracked, think you've... I've cracked one, two, three, what? four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> do you mean you've learned how to crack? <laughs> OK, you've cracked the ones, the twos. And, and, and I cracked seven the other night. Right, give us the seven times table. <laughs> but I can't do it now, I can't remember it. One, seven is seven. Oh, it's all foul. This is like my worst nightmare. One, seven is seven. Two, seven to fourteen. Three, seven to twenty-one. Four, seven to twenty-eight. Five sevens. Now, this is where it all fell. Five sevens to thirty-five. <laughs> six sevens to forty-two. Seven sevens to forty. Right, this is forty-nine. Forty-nine. Eight sevens to fifty-four. 52? Higher! 50, <laughs> 56? Okay. What was that? 9 7 to 56? 10 7 to 70? 11 7 to 77? 12 7 to 84? 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. Right, so. Wait, 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 wait. So. Don't, don't, don't get out! It's not a Jeremy Kyle show! It's just seven times table! I think this could be a cracking new round. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, is it the truth? I think it's. I think it's a lie. Why do you think it's a lie? Why would anybody do that at night? That's the last thing you need before you go to bed. I think it's true. Patsy thinks Patsy's it's true. Patsy's going to stick on true. We'll go with Patsy, though. All right, then, true. so, Joe, truth or lie? That is... True! <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. Uh, actually, uh, Joe, I've got a mental arithmetic uh, problem for you. If you take one husband and recite multiplication tables at him seven nights a week, how many divorce lawyers will he need? 